Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to uh, this video. Uh, got kind of a movie poster, cool kind of thing. It's a bit long, this one, uh, but stick with me. Uh, this cool movie poster idea, uh, John Wicky type style. Uh, and I got a shout out to uh, a subscriber there, Mark Anthony Henderson for the idea. Thank you so much. I went off the cuff a little bit, maybe not exactly what he wanted, but let's go. Okay, so we're in Affinity Photo, so let's build this poster. So the three images I'm gonna be using for this composition are this city, I'm going to use this sky, and I'm gonna use this model. And we'll add some other stuff to it, but these are the main elements we're gonna to use to build this poster. Um, if you wanna know my canvas size, what I'm working with here, it's a, I just picked a random uh, nine by 13, so it's nine long by 13 high. Anything uh, portrait or like letter or legal, anything this format will work fine for a poster. So anyways, uh, let's get started here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to isolate this uh, city. So I want the city, I want the buildings and the street, but I don't want the sky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab the selection brush tool up here in the tools menu. You can hit W on your keyboard if you're doing something similar to this. And I'm just gonna start painting over top to grab this city. And we'll see what uh, how good of a job Affinity does here with these buildings. So I'm gonna grab those and we'll clean this up in the refine here. So I'm gonna hit refine at the top. And then I'm just gonna zoom in. I'm gonna use my uh, matte brush here to just fix up some of this selection here. Let Affinity pick out the buildings in the sky. And it won't be perfect, but that's actually okay. I'm gonna do a little dot here. And I'm gonna grab my foreground brush and just paint a little bit on some spots that are a bit, a bit blurry. Um, just to let Affinity know that this is actually, and I'm not super worried about this either because this is going to be in the distance, so it's going to be less saturated, so that's all good. So I think, honestly, this is probably fine. Uh, in my refined selection here, I'm going to change my preview to white matte just so I can see it. And it looks pretty clean. If you zoom in here, there'll be a couple things to clean up. But again, this will be in the distance. You won't really see it. So what I'm going to do is select, uh, for my output, I'm going to select new layer, click on that. And that'll give me the um, new pixel layer uh, with the sky uh, removed. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to call this new city. And what I'll do is I'll just quickly clean this up between these buildings. Um, like I said, you won't really see it anyways, but I just have to do it. So I'm just going to grab uh, the eraser and my pen tool. I'm going to quickly clean this up and then I will be right back. Okay, so I just did a quick cleanup uh, using the eraser and the pen tool, just selecting some of the areas and just cleaning up some of the uh, the extra uh, fuzziness, if you will, that was coming off that selection. So now we have the city selected um, and we need a sky. So I have this sky that I wanna use here, uh, which is, uh, I'll turn the city off. So this is what the sky looks like. And I picked it on purpose because um, it kind of looks like this. I don't even really need to alter it too much because I like the pinky purple blue. So I've dropped that in the layers panel behind the city. So now it appears as the actual sky. Uh, and I want to bring the city down a little bit because I want more sky because the model is going to be coming up from underneath here. So I'm going to pull that down. Now, this looks pretty good, but the sky and the city do not match each other. Um, they look like they're two different photos, which they are. So what I'm going to do is add some stuff to the city to give it a bit more of a look that it belongs with that sky. So with my city selected, I'm going to go down to my adjustments here. And the first thing I'm going to add is a white balance. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm gonna drag my white balance on top of the city so it's attached inside there, so it's just affecting the city. And because the sky is like really, really blue and really pink, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my slider on the blue over a little bit. And you'll see if I go all the way, that's how blue it would get. So a bit too much, so I want some, maybe something like that. And there also is very pink. So I'm just gonna try, slide it this way and see how it looks with the pink. If I went this way, it would go green. So I'm gonna slide it this way, pretty pink actually, because it. I'm not going for a super, super realistic look. I just want it to look a little bit more merged together. So let's pick that right now. So that's my white balance. Um, I've got my white balance changed this way and my tint over this way. So um, that's what we're gonna start with to make this look a little bit better. And now a little trick that I'm gonna do, I wanna show you guys that you can apply to things. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my shapes and I'm gonna grab a rectangle. I'm gonna draw out my rectangle up here and I'll pull it up to the top so you can see it. So I've got a rectangle, just a white rectangle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a color from the sky and I'm gonna make it the color of this rectangle and then I'm gonna clip the rectangle inside 
the city, and then I'm gonna change the blend mode. And I'll show you what I mean. So I got this white um, rectangle here. I'm gonna go up to my uh, color picker tool here, and I've got my rectangle selected. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna grab some of the sky, some like maybe a light pink, like right here. I'm gonna select that. It's now loaded in my color picker. And now that I have that selected with my rectangle, I'm gonna click on that. And now it's gonna to change to that particular pink. So it's matched one of the pinks in the sky. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rectangle and I'm gonna clip it inside the city. So to do that in my layers panel, I've got my rectangle selected. I'm just gonna go and drop it right on top of the city. And I'm gonna drop it in here. And now you can see that it's in here. And now it just looks kind of weird because I have this pink uh, color clipped inside the city. But now with my rectangle selected, I'm gonna go up to my blend modes and I'm gonna change the blend mode. And on this one, I think, I'm gonna go through and just see what I like here. These look pretty cool. I actually think I'm gonna go with multiply, but I'm gonna bring the opacity down a bit. So this was this was without it. This is with it fully, and I'm gonna put it somewhere, maybe somewhere about, let's say, no, nah, that's a little bit too much. Let's say, I'm gonna go to 50%. So I just wanna show you what this looked like. So before I had the rectangle in there, it looked like this. And now that I've clipped the rectangle inside, the pink rectangle, which was sampled from the sky, and I've changed the blend mode to multiply, this is what it looks like. So it looks a little bit better, a little bit darker. And uh, I'm still actually gonna pull the city down a little bit here because I want more sky. Let's try that for now, and I'll make the sky a bit bigger. Maybe like something like that. Okay, so now we got a city, we got a sky, cool. Next thing we're gonna do, is isolate this model. Okay, so this one I'm also going to skip ahead on. Um, if you don't know how to isolate subjects um, using the selection brush tool or the pen tool, I have two really good videos which will show you how to isolate anything in Affinity Photo. Um, this one's gonna be a bit complex because I have to do the selection brush, then I have to clean it up with the pen tool, so it's gonna take a little bit. So I'm gonna skip past this part, but look in the description below if you don't, if you don't know how to isolate subjects. The pen tool and the selection brush tool are your best friends. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I will be right back. Okay, so we got our model isolated here as best we could. And my idea here is I wanna drop him behind the city. So he's coming up sort of from, uh, uh, you know, behind the sky, but in front of, or behind the buildings here. So in the layers panel here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag him just below the city. And now he appears kind of coming out from behind the building sort of thing. Maybe I'll drop the city a little bit more. So this is what we got so far. We got the model, we got the sky, we got the city. So now we need to clean this model up a little bit now that he's been isolated and make him look like he's more part of the uh, part of the scene. So here's another trick that I like to use a lot. Uh, I'm gonna do something called a gradient map and I'm gonna add the sky's colors to this model to make him blend in a little bit more. So with my model selected, I'm gonna go down to my adjustment layer here and I'm going to pick gradient map. And when I do it, it's gonna look crazy. Just, 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 it's gonna look crazy. So it looks all nuts, right? So this gradient map thing, it's very strange. I'm gonna take my gradient map and I'm gonna clip it inside the model. So now it's just affecting the model. Now gradient map's pretty cool because it's what it, it shows you where the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights are. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab these colors from the sky and apply it to this uh, model so he blends in a little bit more. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna pick the, um, the, the shadows first. I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna change the color by clicking on this. Now, what I'm gonna do is grab my color picker within this, and what I'm gonna do is find the darkest place in this sky photo, which is about here, around here, right? So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna apply that to the shadows. And you can see it, when I do that, it changes on the model, and it looks very strange still, but stay with me. And now I'm gonna to go to the midtones. I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna change the color, and I'm gonna find somewhere in the middle. So this would be too light, this is already too dark, so somewhere in the middle, let's say, is something like, let's say something like this, maybe, is in the middle. And I'm gonna apply that to the midtones. Now I'm gonna go over to my uh, the far right, which is your highlights. And I'm gonna select this color, and what I'm gonna do is find the brightest part of the picture, which would be somewhere in here, uh, maybe somewhere over here. But I'm gonna grab this, maybe right here, and I'm gonna apply that as the um, uh, highlights. So now it still looks crazy, it looks way too strong. But in my model, I have this gradient map clipped in. So with it selected, what I'm gonna do is go to my opacity here. If I pull it all the way down, that's what it looked like before. That's with all of it, and I just want a little bit. So I'm just gonna give him a bit of tone. Maybe something, maybe something like this. So I'm at 30% right now. If I go to 50, that might be too much. 
let's go maybe 25%. Maybe I'll go 25%. So I just want to show you this is without it and with it. So it just adds that he sort of looks like he's kind of in the he's in the atmosphere with the rest of the um, um, selections in there. So it's just a little something to add. Now what we have to do is, and I'll speed this part up too. Sorry guys, I'm not going to go through. I don't want to go through everything and bore you. Um, but I want to hi put highlights on him um, from the sky. So I'll show you a couple things. I'll start and then I'll speed it up. So what I want to do is I want to take this model here. I've got him selected in the layers panel. I'm going to add a new pixel layer. I'm going to click on that. Now it's going to appear above him and I want it, I'm going to paint on this layer and I want it clipped inside the model. So if I paint, it doesn't go over the background in the sky. I just want it to be in the model. So I'm going to click, drag it on top of the model. Now I have a pixel layer inside. Now what I'm going to do is grab my brush, my paintbrush by hitting B on my keyboard or going over here in your tools uh, menu and clicking on the paintbrush. And the brush I'm going to select is just going to be a basic soft brush. So I'm going to pick this 128 round light brush right? And I've got my pixel layer selected. It's clipped inside the model. I'll just show you now if I pick a high color. If I start painting, it's only going to paint on him. It's not going to go outside because I have this pixel layer clipped inside of the model. So whatever I do um, won't, won't, uh, won't affect any of the other things. So what I'm going to do is start sampling colors around him and painting that on him so it looks like the shadows are, um, or so it looks like the light is coming from the sky from behind him. So uh, let's change our opacity on this paintbrush down a little bit so it doesn't look too crazy. I'm going to go to 50% and see what that looks like. Might be too much. And now I'm going to sample, say in his hair here, there's this bright, let me zoom in here, find his hair, there's this bright pink. So I'm going to sample this color here. And it looks like it might be a bit too much. Let me change the blend mode to color and see if that makes a difference. Okay. And I'm just going to lightly paint on his hair here which you may not be able to see much right now, but as we go along, I'm gonna, so as I'm going along, what I'm doing is I'm sampling the colors and you can see in the top right corner here, as I go, uh, I'm sampling. And on my Mac, I'm hitting option, like I'm holding on option and clicking on the color I want um, on a PC, what is that, Alt, I think. And I'm just clicking and dragging and painting over top of his skin where I think the colors will match a little bit better. And I can always change the blend mode after if this looks wrong. But I just want to get some highlights on his skin to make it look like this, the background is glowing on his skin from the actual background and not the photo we pulled him from. So again, if you keep your eye in the top right corner, you'll see the color as I'm selecting it is changing a little bit because I'm trying to match where he is. And these are just subtle things, but they help make the composition look a little bit more real. And I'll show you so far, if I turn this on and off, if I zoom in here on his cheek, say it's nothing major. But now he has that glow from the um, background to make it look like he's a little bit more uh, included. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the rest of him. I'm gonna paint on the gun and on his coat and make it look, just give it a little bit more of a feel that he's there and I will be right back. All right, everybody, so just a little something added here. I'll show you with it off and on. Um, so I've got two different pixel layers here. So I have, this is with it off totally. So um, if you look at his highlights here on the gun and on his um, cheek and things like that, I'll turn this back on. Again, just very, very minor little inflections of the uh, background behind him just to make him look like he's a little bit more uh, present. He's a little bit more in there. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just add a little scar on his face here just to rough him up a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to use the uh, pen tool. So I'm going to grab the pen tool here and I'm just going to draw out sort of a jagged looking line on his face just to make it look Let's say we'll pick that. And now that I have that selected, I'm going to give it a color and I'm going to give it like a uh, maybe like a dark red, something like this maybe for now. And it doesn't look super realistic now, but we'll work on that. So I'm just gonna zoom up to show you it. So it doesn't look super realistic yet, but we'll we'll mess with that. Pull it up this way maybe, kind of like that. And I'm gonna change the blend mode, first of all, to color burn, which will give it a bit of a dark, um, 
a dark look. I'll zoom out there. Again, still doesn't look totally believable, so we're gonna click on that. We're gonna bring the opacity down a little bit so it fades sort of into his skin as well. That would be all the way and that would be nothing. So let's put it somewhere. Let's put it maybe somewhere around 65% like that. Okay, I think that's a little bit better from a distance. It's looking pretty good. So uh, now let's add some other elements. Let's add some rain to make this look a little bit more, uh, a little bit cooler. I probably messed with the color still in the city. I'm not super happy with it. It looks a little bluey. Um, let's actually go back to the city and let's go back to our white balance. And let me turn the blue down a little bit. That's That was too blue. That was like this. Maybe I'll do something like that. And you look at these things a thousand times and change them a thousand times. So when this comes out, it'll probably still look different. But uh, let's add some elements. So what I want to do is I want to add some rain to make this a bit more exciting. So I have uh, assets in my computer already of um, rain and things like that. So I'm going to go to my assets window here and I'm going to grab some rain overlays. And uh, let's see, what do we got here? Foggy rain, heavy rain, light shower, downpour. We'll see what these looks like. I'm going to go, first I'm going to pick soft rain. I'm going to drag it over top and bring it up to the very top here of my layers panel so we can see it. Zoom out so we can see how that looks. Whoops. And we'll blow it up. And it looks pretty cool. Uh, what I'm going to do though is change the color of it because I want it to look a little bit more cool and dramatic. So with my rain selected here, I'm going to go to my adjustments and I'm going to pick a recolor. Uh, and I'm going to clip that right into the rain so it's just affecting the rain. I'm going to change it so it looks either purple or blue. So you got to mess with these sliders a little bit here to figure out which way it's going to go. Slide it that way and I'm going to make it maybe more, I'll make this one more blue. So you can see I've got some rain there and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that so it looks a little bit more intense and I'll move it around so it's not totally matched up. And then I'm going to grab one more rain, uh, which is, should be a little bit heavier. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we're going to grab one more here. Sorry guys, I'm just looking for the right one. This one looks pretty cool. This is, this is what I want, something like this. Perfect. So we're going to drag this out and I'm going to make this rain also a different color. So with my street light rain selected here, I'm going to go to my adjustments. Recolor, I'm going to clip that into the uh, rain because that's I just want it to affect that. And let's change that color too to something like uh, purple, which is kind of what I'm going for. Yeah, maybe something like that. There we go. So now we've got some good rain there. Uh, I'll show you with it uh, with it off. So that was this is without the rain. That's with the rain added, just to give it a bit more of a dramatic effect. Um, let's see, what else we're going to do here? We're going to have to add some text. We're going to have to add some other stuff in here. Okay, so before we add the text and a couple other things here, um, what I'm going to do is just sort of burn the edges here. And I'm just going to do that by simply adding a, a pixel layer, grabbing my brush. And I'm gonna just going to grab a... I'm going to use like not quite black, but almost black. I'm pretty black. And with a low opacity here, I'm just going to start painting on the bottom and around the edges here a little bit and just, just to darken them to give it a bit more of a mood, not much, just a little something that makes it just a little bit more moody. And I'm not touching the model, I'm just literally going around the edges here very lightly and just sort of burning them. I could use the burn tool, I guess, but... So just this, just for a little bit of mood. Okay, so now that that's done, uh, what I'm gonna do is put everything into one layer so I can go into the develop persona and then I can mess with these colors a little bit further. Then we'll add the text and then we'll add something on the bottom to make it look like a movie poster and uh, we'll be all good. So uh, what I like to do to do this first is I like to go to my layers panel, go to the top and I like to go merge visible. And when you click on that, you're gonna get a layer up here that has everything merged into one. And the reason I do that is because otherwise you have to flatten the whole photo, you lose all your layers, and you can go in and, because Develop Persona won't let you go in with all these layers. It makes you flatten them and then you can edit it all together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna turn all these layers off before I go in. 
So everything we've had here, I'm just turning it off. And you'll see that nothing's changing because I have it all flattened into one layer now. So it's all one image now. That will allow me to go over to the develop persona, which is up here in your uh, top left here, develop persona. So I'm gonna click on that. And this is gonna just give some like vibrance and some, some like it's gonna make things pop a little bit more and I'll show you how. So I've got this selected here. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, so there's, there's all these different things you can do. I like to start with the basic tab and I like to mess with the exposure a little bit. So we'll see if that goes a little bit darker, that goes a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna bring the exposure up a tiny bit. And it depends, you, you play with these back and forth to see what actually makes sense to you. I'm gonna turn the black point down slightly. Brightness is fine. I like to mess with the clarity. The clarity I like to like pull up because it makes it look, look at the definition of the buildings and him when you pull this up. It just looks a little bit more, I don't know, epic. I don't know what the word is, but this is, you know, what, what, what it was at. And then I'm going to pull it up here just to make it look a bit more intense. It makes it look kind of, I don't know what it is. Hyper-realistic. I don't know what the word is. Um, and you can mess with saturation and white balance and shadows. I like to mess with the shadows a little bit. Bring the shadows down because the sky is pretty, looks pretty good. I don't usually mess with the highlights, but I'll mess with them a little bit here. And you can do this a hundred times and you would do it a hundred different ways. So there's no wrong answer to how you're doing things. Um, I'm going to leave the vibrance and the saturation right now because I could do this a million times and, and always mess with it. Um, some people like to add a bit of noise. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. So this would be, that's obviously way too much noise. But people like to add a bit of noise for like grain to make it just look, I don't know if it's almost like film-like. Oh, I just like, no, you know what? I'm not going to add any. I've decided I'm not going to add any. And curves, you can mess with the colors in there. Um, but I'm just going to leave this as is. I like to really, clarity is what I go for. I'm messing kind of with the black point and the exposure. But we're going to leave it at this right now. So we're going to hit develop. So now this is uh, done here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some text. So I'm gonna go over to my text panel here, click on that, and I'm just gonna call this something simple. I'm gonna call it Fury, because I want a short name, and I'm gonna change it to white for now, just so we can see it. And the font I wanna use, I wanna use like an outline. I want it to look like it's, uh, you can see through the text. So I have a font for that, but um, it's called Honey, yeah, this one, perfect. So I, this is the kind of the idea I was going for here. And I'm gonna change I'm gonna leave the color white, but what I'm gonna do is add a glow to it. I got my text selected. I'm gonna to go to my effects panel here, click on that, and I'm gonna to go to outer glow, because that's what I want. And I wanna use a pink. Um, so I'm gonna grab one from the sky to see if it works. If not, we'll grab another one. But I'm gonna grab this bright pink here, select that, and I'm gonna turn up this glow here. I don't want it to be too much. I want it to kind of be a bit, something like that maybe. I don't want it like that. Kind of neon-y, but sort of glowing. So let's go about, I don't know. Maybe something like that. I may actually add, um, I could add two of them. Let me see if I add two of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna duplicate this just to see. That looks a little bit better. It stands out a little bit more. Uh, maybe I'll bring them down a bit, I'm not sure. Maybe like that so you can see them. Okay, and one of the last things I wanna add is this, this is just a PNG I downloaded. You can do this with text. I wanted to add this little um, movie um, credits at the bottom just to make it look a little bit more official. Um, so there we have it. We started with the city, we got rid of the sky, we added a new sky in the background, we isolated the model, we painted some shadows on him, um, some highlights, sorry, to look like the, he, the sky is he's sort of in that, in that environment. We added a gradient map as well to make his skin tone look like a little bit more merged with the other pictures. We added a scar on him. We, uh, what else did we do? We added some rain and we changed the color of the rain to blue and uh, pink to make it kind of just look a bit weird and match up. Uh, we did a, a kind of a burn darkened around the, the edges there. We went into the develop persona, messed with the colors a little bit. And like I said, you could do this a hundred times and it'll come out a hundred different ways. So, uh, and then finally added the text with a outer glow. So it would glow and I added some, uh, just some credits at the bottom fake just to make them look a little bit more real. So uh, I hope you picked up a couple things from this. Um, number one, the gradient map, I'll show you again. Um, I actually have everything turned off, but the gradient map attached inside the model, that's a good way for your subject to grab the color of the shadows, highlights and uh, mid-tones in the surrounding areas. And clipping in a color, I took a rectangle, I, I took a color from the sky pink, I clipped it inside the city, and then I changed the blend mode so it would sort of take on that tone. So that's those are two things I use a lot which are pretty helpful. Um, a lot of ways to do it, but anyways, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, 
tap, 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 tap that like button. And uh, if you are not subscribed, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Huh? Your parents are like, your grandparents, I don't know. Someone's, you, 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 subscribe, subscribe. That's all I got to say. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one.